everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Gil Peleg, I'm from Model 9. I'm going to talk today about object storage and mainframe, tell you about some use cases that our customers told us they find interesting. Um, so uh, it's going to be, a, I would say, an introductory session. What is object storage? Where is uh, object storage could be useful? Uh, and maybe in the end we'll say also a few words about our company, Model 9. Um, I'll start with a few words about myself. Uh, I've been working in mainframe for uh, over two decades, more than half my life. I know it's uh, considered very young in the mainframe world, but still, uh, for me it's a substantial uh, period of my life. I started when I was 18 in mainframe. Uh, in the Israeli Army Computer Center. And then uh, I spent uh, seven years in IBM Poughkeepsie, in the IDSO Center. I was part of uh, eight IBM Redbooks and ZOS implementations. And then I moved inside IBM to work with mainframe storage. Uh, and I stayed in the storage world since then. I worked with a few storage companies. And uh, we started Model 9 three years ago. And Model 9 is about uh, modern uh, mainframe storage. Uh, but today it's not about Model 9, it's more about uh, leveraging modern uh, storage technologies in the mainframe world. Uh, so I'm going to concentrate on, on object storage, which is maybe the newest type data organization and storage organization that exists today in the storage world uh, in general. And I want to start by, you know, just very briefly explaining what is object storage. Uh, I know you guys probably hear that in every cloud-related, uh, modern storage-related uh, type of presentation in mainframe, but this is my, my version of it, okay? Um, so object storage was invented already maybe 20 years ago, maybe a little more. Um, so it's a mature technology, and it's been conceived to handle what we call unstructured data. Okay? Uh, the modern types of data are hard to organize. Okay? It's streams of videos, sound audio recordings, okay? collections of, of pictures. Okay? large collections of objects uh, which don't exactly have a hierarchy to them or an order to them or, or uh, a binding rationale or logic between them. Uh, and that type of data in the world is growing and growing and we're gonna talk about that in a bit. Uh, and they need uh, appropriate uh, storage systems to, to manage them. Uh, and that's what uh, object storage is trying to solve. Uh, so in an object storage system, Data is uh, organized in independent objects, okay? There's no hierarchy. It's not like a file system that you have directories and directories and subdirectories and files. Here, everything is maybe similar to a mainframe volume where everything sits at the root, okay? And you just have the file names, the data set names. So here you have the object names. And every object is, you has to have a unique name and it can be directly accessed by its unique name. Access to object storage is over TCP IP, okay, standard, no proprietary protocols, uh, can be accessed from any system that knows how to communicate over TCP IP, even the mainframe can do that for 25 years, something like that. Um, so it's accessible from any platform, uh, almost from anywhere, because you can go TCP IP over long distance, no limitations. Uh, and uh, usually object storage systems, they provide HTTP uh, type of APIs, REST APIs, to access uh, uh, the data and perform actions on the data, update the data, write data, read data, uh, things like that are all provided through APIs. Uh, the fashion today is to do it over RESTful APIs, but that can be something else in the future. Um, <coughs> The interesting thing about object storage is that in addition to the data itself, each object also has a collection of metadata that is attached to it. 
and you can read the, the metadata and you can work on the metadata, query the metadata, index the metadata, perform some operations on the metadata without touching the data. Um, and this also affects economics of object storage when it's offered in the public cloud uh, and also uh, provides very powerful uh, capabilities for analytics and uh, you know, machine learning and everything that has to process large amounts of data. Uh, object storage solutions exist. They are very famous in the public cloud. Amazon offers them and other uh, cloud providers offer them, but actually uh, not, not everybody knows that there are many types of on-premises, in your data center, enterprise object storage solution. And we see more and more of them uh, from all the, the major uh, storage vendors. Um, and I, as I said, I just wanted to give you the sense that this is not so new, okay? It's been around for a long time. Amazon itself has started offering its S3 storage, which is object storage based, uh, more than 10 years ago, okay? And they have many, many users and many, many applications using it. By the way, uh, feel free to ask questions during the presentation, okay? I'd be happy to questions okay uh, whoa so uh, uh, a few characteristics of object storage uh, what I was you know the sense I was trying to to deliver here is that object storage has the same characteristics you would expect from enterprise storage okay and maybe more okay I don't want to say <coughs> enterprise storage I would even like to say main storage Okay, it's highly scalable. It was designed for uh, very large amounts of data, managing very large numbers of objects, okay? Hundreds of millions of objects, uh, petabytes of data, okay? Uh, and it scales very, very well. You can start small and grow very easily. Um, and also the economics are attractive if you go and ask the vendors. Uh, it includes all the availability features you would expect. Uh, inside the array, of course, you have a great type of, uh, of technologies. You have more modern technologies, such as the laser encoding, which is the hottest uh, buzzword in, in uh, data protection in object storage systems today. <coughs> um, you have uh, replication, sync replication, async replication. You can do object storage over uh, geographically dispersed <coughs> locations. Okay, so it uh, offers everything you would expect. Uh, also in security, which is very important, uh, modern object storage systems offer you know, the latest and greatest in, in uh, security standards, in encryption, uh, encryption uh, for data in flight, encryption for data at rest, uh, also solutions such as immutable storage or warm, right ones read many uh, technologies are available. Uh, so you have all the, uh, of course, auditing capabilities. Uh, so all, all the, uh, everything you would expect in, in terms of security. In terms of performance, uh, object storage was certainly designed for uh, large streams of data. Okay, so it was designed to hold large objects where you would stream data to the object storage and, and, uh, and for that it performs very, very well. It of course performs at, uh, I would say, enterprise grade also for large collection of small objects, but it, was, it really shines with a uh, uh, large streaming type of workloads. Okay, and maybe uh, the last thing is, and you gotta have economics as well, uh, Object storage is more of a distri distributed systems type of storage. Uh, and uh, as such, it offers, it offers different kind of pricing than perhaps what we have come to, you know, being used to in the mainframe world. And from what we see in the market, you can see uh, price differences between, you know, three, five, sometimes 10x uh, between mainframe primary storage, mainframe secondary storage, and object storage. And of course, when you consider the public uh, uh, 
the public storage uh, providers and their cold storage offerings, such as Amazon Glacier, for example, then uh, the differences in pricing become much, much higher. Um, so sometimes it's interesting to see what analysts say about, you know, technologies, not just the vendors and not just people like me who come to, uh, to lecture in, in uh, you know, in uh, trade shows. Uh, so you can check, you know, with your favorite analyst. I just bought examples from, you know, IDC and Gartner. Uh, and they both believe that object storage is the answer to, you know, the rapidly growing amount of data in the world. And all assessments, uh, you know, they believe that most of the data in the future will be unstructured data. Okay, our traditional data will remain, will grow, but unstructured data is predicted to grow much faster. Uh, and it will require different types of storage systems. And analysts believe that object storage systems are uh, the solution to this. And uh, in terms of use cases, uh, uh, what uh, analysts say uh, are good use cases for object storage. Okay, so backup and recovery, archiving of data, disaster recovery, and also more uh, modern applications of data, okay, big data analytics, uh, and being the data store for, you know, cloud native applications, applications that, you know, were born in the cloud and store data in the cloud. Uh, object storage is very good for these use cases. Um, and, you know, just before I, I talk about the use cases, I just, you know, <coughs> put up really quickly a very partial list of you know, who provides object storage? And the answer is pretty much everyone. Okay. Uh, all, the, the, all the good old, you know, trusted, uh, long existing uh, storage vendors, both in the mainframe world and distributed world. Uh, certainly companies with dis enterprise distributed storage, all the public cloud providers, Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft Azure, IBM in the cloud. Uh, and also, uh, which is very interesting, there are many, many types of open source uh, solutions that provide enterprise grade uh, storage solutions that can use any hardware. Uh, so this is not necessarily a proprietary solution. Uh, there are reasons to buy from the big vendors, of course. There are reasons, other reasons to buy from the public cloud providers, and there, there could be uh, reasons where, you know, open source solutions could be beneficial. But the important message for me to you is that there, are, there is choice, okay? There is flexibility. Uh, probably there is a difference in costs. Uh, so these are, you know, options to consider uh, when, you, when you think about uh, object storage. So uh, I want to concentrate on, you know, more of our world and where object storage can be useful in the mainframe world. Uh, and we've come up with a list of use cases uh, related to backup, archiving, and data recovery. And these uh, are use cases that, you know, when talking to our customers, you know, we just tell them, tell us, uh, sometimes even imagine with us what an ideal a uh, use case for object storage would be, where would they see uh, the best fit for object storage? And I wanted just to discuss with you, you know, these five types of, of uh, use cases for object storage. Um, and here I would be very interested in your feedback as well, if you have any. Um, so the first one, uh, using object storage to, to create additional recovery points. Okay, here, uh, the idea here is basically, you know, we have very good trusted working technologies in the mainframe world. Uh, for example, taking snapshots. Uh, IBM calls them flash copy. You have a shadow image from Hitachi. You have a, a time finder from EMC. Uh, they exist, but uh, for some reason, 
maybe you guys can come up with the reason, but you know, we don't see customers doing them at mass. Uh, and, but although many customers believe it would be very beneficial to keep uh, many snapshots and the history of snapshots of their data. Uh, and when talking to customers, you know, we can imagine how uh, leveraging object storage, which is, which is highly scalable and has its uh, attractive economics, could be a type of solution to, to these issues. Uh, and the idea here says, okay, leverage your existing snapshot capabilities in the mainframe, take a snapshot, quickly move it to scalable uh, low-cost storage, and then your mainframe capacity, your dusty capacity is again immediately available to take another snapshot. And if you can do that fast enough, that data transfer, you get even like a continuous data protection like, okay, it's not a real continuous data protection solution, uh, but it is a type of, of uh, solution that would get you multiple uh, uh, recovery points uh, per day. What's interesting here is that you can implement such a solution without adding capacity on your uh, <coughs> mainframe storage. Okay? Uh, and of course, in such a solution, you would require the ability to recover quickly from the uh, object storage, whether it's for a single data set, an application, or volume. Customers even fantasize about, you know, a, a, a bare metal uh, recovery type of solution or standalone solution, uh, as we call it in the mainframe world. And now this use case has a twist uh, that can make it very valuable uh, for security uh, reasons. Okay, uh, object storage systems, all the modern object storage systems, include very advanced security controls. For example, they support. Uh, WARM capabilities, WARM, which stands for write once, read many. Okay, it's a type of uh, storage that you can write on, but it cannot be changed uh, after, after it was written. Okay, so not accidentally and not uh, maliciously, uh, it cannot <coughs> be changed. Of course, to a certain policy that you define, okay, it's not written there forever. Uh, but you can le leverage that capability along with, you know, encryption end-to-end, -to, -end, to have a protected copy of your data that cannot accidentally be changed. Um, unlike, you know, traditional backups, which are accessible through your mainframe, for example, you know, tape-based backups, you could accidentally do something harmful to them, okay? Or you could perhaps just accidentally delete your tape management catalog and you lose access to them, okay? Uh, these things happen, okay, we've seen them happen. Well, not accidental. Uh, and let's, n yes, and we even heard of some uh, cases where it was not accidental. So, uh, um, by leveraging warm technologies, for example, you can uh, recover from such a situation, okay, where uh, your secondary or primary data has been uh, corrupted. Um, <coughs> Of course, the mainframe is very good these days with encryption. It has encryption capabilities, and customers like, you know, to put, uh, they trust, they want to trust their data with, you know, their mainframe and not distributed systems. So, to, so today, mainframe can encrypt very well, and the data can be encrypted over the wire, which adds <coughs> another security layer before it reaches the, the, the warm storage. Uh, and by the way, about WOM technologies, there are uh, uh, certifications for that today. There are companies with certificate, there are uh, regulations for that, and some industries require uh, WOM storage for certain types of data. Uh, and you know, combining the cost, the scale, and the WOM capabilities of object storage uh, could provide a very uh, interesting solution uh, for creating an isolated, isolated because it's off-platform, it's not accessible in your standard mainframe credentials or mainframe tools, uh, and very secure. And of course, uh, if we have that, we would like you know, to imagine also capabilities of restoring our data in case something did happen, some corruption did happen, and we cannot you know, uh, rely on the data we already have on the mainframe, 
we would like some solution to uh, examine the data we have here and of course recover without relying on a compromised server. So, uh, as we said, you know, object storage is accessible over TCP IP, which means it can be uh, located almost anywhere. And if you have technology to move data fast enough uh, to your object storage, you could create uh, a type of vault copy or an off-site remote copy of your data. It could be in a DR data center that you keep, it could be in one of you know, the recovery services providers that exist out there, and it could be in the cloud. Uh, then this copy of the data is accessible from anywhere you choose to recover it, whether it's your own site, or a hosted site, or a service you, you, uh, you take from one of the recovery uh, solutions. Uh, providers and uh, uh, the nice thing here is that again you have no limitation on distance um, and many customers still keep this type of vault copy today we've seen many customers keep them on tapes uh, but this is an alternative tapes to take them off-site requires manual handling many times if you want them truly detached from your system you have to use physical tapes and not virtual tapes and that adds manual labor many times, and you have to take care of their security, encrypt the tapes, and this is also challenging in the mainframe world. Uh, and this could be a type of, of vault copy solution, remote solution, um, that can be done you know, without additional hardware, only over TCP IP. Okay, so uh, um, another option, another use case, is you know, just adding a, another tier to your existing storage hierarchy, to your existing storage environment. Uh, not all data is created equal, okay? Some types of data may need to be kept on site, uh, on very reliable storage, very, uh, high performance storage and maybe some types of data are okay with uh, a more remote system or a less expensive system uh, or a system that doesn't uh, offer uh, the same performance uh, capabilities. So you have options and certainly in object storage world you have many options and you can choose what's right for your data. Uh, so we see customers that put uh, test data in object storage, test backups, uh, and we see them uh, put uh, production data in there, but you know, maybe data that uh, until you know, they, they introduced object storage in their environment uh, didn't make sense for them to keep. Uh, large files that they want to keep uh, uh, for long retention periods and they don't want to overload their, their virtual tape systems. Uh, and it gives them the capability to, to keep stuff that they haven't uh, kept before until today. Um, for such a type of solution, it would be nice if it could uh, you know, connect, interact <coughs> with existing mainframe archiving or dataset migration capabilities. Okay, that would be kind of a seamless uh, solution because, you know, uh, migrating data, data sets in, in MVS already has an interface which is through the catalog. It doesn't really, you don't really see the media that the data is stored on, okay? So one solution may store it on tapes, but maybe other solutions can store it directly in the cloud and it's still transparent to your application, okay? Um, and again, because of the scale and economics of object storage, it might be uh, very suitable for storing data for long periods of time. Uh, and ideally, because you know, uh, the, the protocols are open, the protocols are standard, it's over TCP IP, uh, most of the object storage solutions are, are compatible with one another, there's not really uh, much of proprietary solutions there, 
Okay, they basically all support the same S3 uh, protocol. So this could be a way to store your data for long periods of time uh, without having to keep all the equipment or some types of equipment that you know were used to write the data, as we see some customers do, you know, with their tapes. They have to keep the tape drives uh, to be able to read the media, or they have to go so migration processes to migrate from one type of tape media to another. Um, so this could be a way to overcome this with, with a, a, a standard uh, way uh, to, to store your data for, for long periods of time. Uh, yeah, that's that. Okay. And the last, the last one I wanted to, to discuss uh, was, you know, maybe taking it one step forward and saying, okay, it was good as an, as an addition, maybe it can also be good as a, as a replacement uh, for the things I do today. Uh, if we could uh, build uh, a solution over object storage that would sustain uh, backup workloads, for example, okay? And I know you guys, you all back up uh, terabytes of data on a daily basis. You migrate terabytes of data on a daily basis, large volumes of data. Uh, so you require a solution that provides high, high uh, performance, high throughput, uh, and object storage provides all that, and it can scale to, to provide all that. Okay, and just need a clever way uh, or an efficient way to move the data over TCP IP to your object storage. Uh, it has to make say, sense economically as well, of course, but it could be a backup solution. Uh, you could back up data sets, back up volumes, uh, and when you uh, do that, when you use object storage for your, for your backups and you, in a way, get off tapes for your backup, you also get away with a lot of tape-related processes, such as, you know, recycling, reclaiming, some products call it merging tapes, and all these processes also take a lot of resources, expensive resources on the mainframe side, and if you don't use tapes, then you don't need these processes, okay? Um, another advantage of object storage may be that, you know, you could keep all the metadata that you need about your backups <coughs> on the object storage system because it supports storing metadata. And then you would not need an additional database, index, catalog, control data set, call, mm -hmm. call it whatever you, uh, you would. On the mainframe side, you could keep all the data and the metadata on the same system. You would not have issues such as syncing between multiple databases. Uh, and from wherever you access your object storage, you would have the current a copy of the metadata uh, stored with the data. Uh, of course, when you do that, you also, you don't need a tape management software, okay? <coughs> okay, any questions so far, by the way, about the use cases, about my idea? So uh, uh, after going through these use cases, what I wanted to do very briefly towards <coughs> the end of the presentation is just uh, introduce at a high level our solution, the Model 9 solution. Um, tell you a little bit about what we do and how it relates to you know, enabling and, and bringing object storage into uh, uh, the mainframe world to benefit from, from the advantages of object storage. Um, so Model 9 is mainframe software. It runs on the mainframe. Um, it's written in Java. So that should automatically register with you guys as running on zip engines instead of standard CPUs. So everything we do on the mainframe side runs on <coughs> zip engines. So I would say over 90% of it runs on uh, on zip engines, okay, and what we do, we provide your standard mainframe uh, uh, data management operations, backup, to store, archive, migrate, uh, and recall. 
we do them over zip engines and we do them directly to object storage system. Okay, so we don't use tapes for these operations. We do them uh, directly to, to object storage. There's no need for additional hardware. It's a software only solution. It works with certainly all the uh, uh, vendors I listed previously okay, and many more. Um, under the covers, we would leverage all the good stuff on the mainframe. Okay, so our security is Rakuf based. We play, uh, you know, we are well behaved in terms of catalog. When we migrate the data set, it's cataloged properly. It can be automatically <coughs> recorded. Uh, we obey to the SMS storage policy, so you don't have to redefine all your definitions to us. And another interesting feature is that under uh, the hood, uh, we use DFDSS as our data mover. So you get all the reliability and backward compatibility and future compatibility of DFDSS to your mainframe data. Uh, and when we store the data uh, on the object storage, we actually preserve the DFDSS format. So you can recover the data simply by using DFDSS. Of course, our solution would make it much easier for you. But even if Modern 9 is not around, or if you're in a recovery site that, I don't know, for some reason it's not accessible, you can always restore your data using standard mainframe tools. There's no, no locking in. Um, <coughs> we don't keep any database or control data set on the mainframe side. We store all our metadata here on the object storage. Okay, so there's no need to sync, or maintain, or reorg, or whatever, uh, any uh, control data sets uh, on the mainframe side. Uh, we also offer a management server, which provides a, a very uh, friendly <coughs> user, graphical user interface. Uh, I can tell you that the new generation of uh, system programmers and storage administrators, they, they really love it. And also, uh, the more experienced generation of uh, storage management, when they try it, they love it as well. Okay, it's very, very easy to use. Um, but as you can see, it's not part of, you know, the data pass. It's there as an addition. It can make your life easier. But even if it's not there, you know, all your backup and restore operations keep functioning. Uh, Currently, yes. Okay. Not at the moment. If you have a specific need, we can explore together, but at the moment, no. Uh, so just summarizing our you know, unique features, what makes us unique, we run on zips, we run directly to object storage and read directly from object storage, no hardware uh, required here. It's a, a software-only solution. Our source can be any mainframe disk from any vendor, uh, and our target can be any object storage from, from any vendor on premises, in the cloud. Um, if you don't or want or can't use object storage, uh, NAS or SAN storage is also fine. Okay, we support that as well directly from from the mainframe. Uh, we use a standard format. It's not a proprietary format. The data is always accessible. You're not locked in to any vendor data format. Uh, it runs side by side, augmenting your existing solution. Uh, so you can use it to do all the stuff we talked about. Uh, you know, while keep doing everything you're doing today, it can be an addition. Um, and, uh, you know, many times customers ask us about, you know, uh, comparing maybe moving data over TCP/IP versus moving data over FICON. Okay. So obviously FICON, very fast, very reliable, very good. I have nothing bad to say about FICON. Um, but through technology today, you can move data very fast over TCP/IP 
uh, in the same reliability, because we run on zip engines, it doesn't cost you much CPU resources that you're built uh, against. Uh, and we do that with a lot of you know, clever technology <coughs> into the product. And we have recently announced also that uh, we will soon provide deduplication technologies in our data movement. So we would reduce much of the uh, uh, data that has to be transferred over CCKT uh, from the mainframe. We also compress the data before we send it out. Um, so, so really, uh, if you try it, you can see that you can really move uh, large volumes of data over TCP IP. It's going to be on a global basis. Um, so just, you know, my, my key takeaways to you regarding object storage, okay? Object storage every, offers everything you would expect from enterprise storage, from mainframe storage, uh, and more. Uh, it is an opportunity to modernize your secondary storage uh, uh, solutions in the mainframe. It is an opportunity to uh, reduce tape footprint and the tape <coughs> overhead that comes with it. Uh, certainly when you consider cloud, but also, you know, distributed storage on-premises offers a new economic model, completely different price ranges for your storage. And certainly in high volumes, it becomes very attractive. Uh, the capability of accessing the object storage directly from uh, ZOS is very, very powerful. Okay, uh, accessing it without relying on additional hardware uh, gives you flexibility, gives the customer flexibility in choosing their solution in, you know, today and in the future. Okay, it's really, it's uh, helpful in, you know, changing your vendor some, someday, or changing your solution, or moving to the cloud, or using a hybrid uh, uh, on-premises plus public cloud solution. Uh, so that's a key <coughs> capability. Uh, and uh, maybe just, you know, as a final word, it's, it, you don't have to choose between, you know, tape, virtual tapes, and object storage. Uh, the two can coexist, they live well together, and there are justifications for, you know, putting some of your data on object storage and keeping some of it uh, in virtual tape. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> that's all I had. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Yo, just tell me a little bit more about this deduplication. I'm not sure if all that. Are you just taking Basically, basically what we're going to do is while we send data out of the mainframe, we're going to check and see, did we already send this piece of data out? If it's a duplicate, then we'll manage that duplication and we don't have to send it again. And what we see with customers is that even, you know, even though in the mainframe world you have incremental backups, incremental backups are usually at the data set level. <coughs> Okay, so even if you know one record in your data set has changed, the legacy backup solutions would back up the whole data set. So if you use some <coughs> kind of deduplication technology, you can reduce the amount of data you have to push out by, you know, we see numbers such as 90 percent. Right. Okay. So in this data set, you're only going to take the number that you want. That's one example. Yeah. Uh, but it can be, you know, a lot sequential <coughs> data sure. that only a few records have changed, then pretty much only these records would be transferred. So you want to take the data? Yeah, exactly. The real data, data, okay, not the... Uh, right, not right. Thank you. 
storage board for specific management classes. As we can also tell us who are the old listing, and then we would act upon exactly as they say. So is it directly with SMS? Is it directly with SMS or not? Yes, it supports SMS. Okay, I don't want to say integrated because it's right. a part of SMS. Okay, right. but the, policy is, the policy of backup, uh, movement to M, to M, one, to M two. Yes, it would honor the, the policy you have today with us in the SMS. SMS. Yes, in SMS. And you create this trust group and management trust to correctly send the information that we like to the address for us by the way. You can create a specific one or use the existing one you have today. Does that answer your question? Yes, that's good. Okay, are there any further questions? If not, then uh, let's thank Gil for a, a fascinating insight. <laughs>